Hey, what's going on guys? I'm the real Mossy and I have a Modern Warfare 3 video for today. I was going to do an analysis of a uh, Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer trailer, but uh, I realized that it's been beaten to death already. So, I thought I can do something a little different. I'm going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly aspects of Modern Warfare 3. I'll tell you how it's going to go down. We'll start off with the good, and uh, this will be everything we as Call of Duty and FPS gamers in general are looking forward to in Modern Warfare 3. In the bad segment, we'll look at new additions to the game that can be potentially detrimental to the gameplay or the community as a whole. A uh, past example would be uh, what the Commando perk did in Modern Warfare 2. Finally, in the ugly section, we'll look at things that made it into the game from previous Call of Duty games that we know ruined the game and frustrated the community. Basically, these are things that should have been taken out by Infinity Ward, but weren't. Now, before I start, I want to make uh, a little disclaimer here. I know Modern Warfare 3 is a very heated subject to discuss. Uh, I'm not trying to bash the game when I point out some potential flaws. I'm going to try to be as objective as possible while discussing the good and the bad aspects of the game. But just keep in mind that regardless of the fact, these are still opinions, and if you disagree with any of them, it's completely fine. Just let me know in the comments. Alright, let's get started. If you're wondering about the trailer running in the background, it is the Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer trailer. I'm sure you guys have seen it before. Alright, let's start off with the good. From what I've been hearing from people who are at COD XP, it looks like the smooth, precise gameplay is back. Because let's face it, the choppiness and what seemed almost like a lag between the controller input and the actual on-screen action are what turned many COD fans away from Black Ops. So the return of smooth gameplay and the one-to-oneness, is that a word? Yeah. Well anyway, it's those factors that make gamers excited. Alright, the best news for any old school Call of Duty fan is that the MP5 is back, baby. Although it is in a new form, and it kinda looks like a hybrid between the M45 from Modern Warfare 2 and the MP5 from Modern Warfare 1, it's still back. Um, now, I don't know how it's gonna handle in Modern Warfare 3, but if it's anything like it was in Call of Duty 4, then we have a winner here. What made the MP5 in Call of Duty 4 great was that 1. It was very powerful, and two, more importantly, it took some skill to use, unlike the M45. If you played COD 4 in its heyday, you'd know that the majority of players either used the MP5 or the AK-47, but they didn't get flamed for it like Modern Warfare 2 players got flamed for using the M45 because of the skill required to use and master the MP5. The M45 along with most guns in Modern Warfare 2 had very little recoil, combine that with high power and you have an overpowered weapon. So I hope Infinity Ward slash Raven Software realizes this and does a better job of balancing the MP5, as well as all the other guns for that matter, and gets them to handle a bit more like Call of Duty 4 and a little less like they did in Modern Warfare 2. Okay, let's stop here and talk about Kill Confirmed, the new game mode in Modern Warfare 3. If you hate cappers, kill whores, and the like, you will enjoy this game mode. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's basically team deathmatch, but after you kill your enemy, you actually have to run over his body, pick up the dog tag he drops, and confirm the kill in order for it to count towards your team's kill total. The winning team is the first team to reach a specified total number of kills. If you or your teammates don't pick up the dog tag, it can be picked up by a teammate of the enemy, at which point the kill will be denied and not added to the game score for your team. This is an excellent idea because it promotes run and gun gameplay. You can't sit in a corner or a room and shoot people and wait to get kill streaks. Having said that, this might be a problem for all you snipers out there. If you get a long distance kill, you better have a teammate nearby to pick up the dog tag or you're basically screwed because your kill will most likely be denied by an enemy. I know there are some snipers watching, so I want to know what you guys think about this. Okay, we'll uh, stop right here and talk about the new point streak system. This is a revamped reward system that not only rewards you for kills, but also for completing objectives. This is a welcomed addition if you play any type of objective game, especially if you're the guy who caps every flag in domination or plants every bomb in search. Because you're the one who's gonna die the most often, especially if you have players on your team who could care less about the objective. This also gives players who are a little less skilled at getting kills but are still team players to actually get a higher kill streak than 3 or 4. And I think it's about time they rewarded the unsung heroes of the game. Alright, let's uh, stop right here and talk about the next thing I'm looking forward to. And it's the sheer variety and ability to customize virtually everything in the game. 
I have a few examples here, let's take a look at the tactical slot. Before it used to be just grenades, now they've included a bunch of other things into this slot. Now granted some of these items like scrambler and portable radar were part of the equipment slot in Black Ops, but they've added some new items like the trophy system. For those of you who don't know what it is, it looks like it's a personal SAM turret, but instead of shooting down air support, it shoots down any missiles launched towards you. I'll point it out later on in the trailer. And uh, here you see the attachments uh, with a new hybrid sight highlighted. It's a new sight that combines a long range 4x scope with a mid range reflex sight. When your target's at long distance, you just flip up the 4x scope and take them out. Now to the kill streak rewards. And they've gone crazy with these things by splitting them up into three groups called strike packages. They've added multiple new kill streaks to each package. I'll go over them briefly. The assault package has your conventional Call of Duty kill streak rewards and focuses on using kills to get more kills. The support package is oriented more towards the team player. These are rewards that are not necessarily lethal but help your whole team out in different ways. And uh, the specialist package unlocks a new perk for every two kills you get. And once you get an eight kill streak, you can unlock all the perks at once for your current life. I'll get back to this one later. Alright, if you're a Call of Duty fanboy, you better turn off the video right now because we're moving on to the bad. These are new additions that may be detrimental to the game. Once again, I will remind you that these are just speculations. And I'm going to start off with uh, weapon proficiency. I know you're going to disagree here and uh, say that it belongs with the good. I will say that parts of it are good. I mean, it does add an extra level of customization and it's one of the few completely new additions to the game. But here's where I see the problem with this. Weapon proficiency is just another way to add an extra perk slot. The attachment proficiency used to be the bling or warlord perk. Uh, focus used to be the pro version of the hardened perk in black ops. Impact was deep impact and so on. So with people already complaining about overpowered perks like ghost, I don't know whether it'd be wise to virtually introduce an extra perk slot, but I might be wrong here and I'm hoping that I am. And Infinity Ward or Raven Software balanced everything to such a point that this can't be exploited. Alright, uh, let's stop right here and talk about the perks. To be honest, I'm a little underwhelmed by the perks of Modern Warfare 3. It feels like Infinity Ward or Raven Software got a little lazy here. Because most of these perks seem recycled, they're either stripped down slash split up versions of an old perk or a different combination of old perks. The only real new additions that I see are the recon perk and the non-pro half of the marksman perk. The rest are just rehashed. Uh, what made Modern Warfare 2 so exciting was that it brought with it a whole bunch of new perks. Granted that some of them did frustrate the hell out of us later on in the game, but at the beginning it was a novelty that made us want to keep coming back. And I think Modern Warfare 3 is lacking in that department when it comes to perks. And speaking of lacking in novelty, let's talk about the graphics as well. Again, I was underwhelmed to say the least. I understand that graphics aren't everything, and the crux of any game is the gameplay. But having said that, is it wrong? To want a more beautiful game than one that was released two years ago? I mean, the jump in graphics from Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare to Modern Warfare 2 was substantial and we were impressed when we saw Modern Warfare 2. But the hop from Modern Warfare 2 to Modern Warfare 3, although I do see a slight improvement in the shadows and texture, is nowhere close to impressive. And I, for one, think that we gamers deserve a little bit more. Okay, uh, let's stop right here and talk about the special strike package. Now, I understand that they're trying to diversify the killstreak reward system, but I think that this particular strike package contributes very little, if anything, to the team. It's more of a lone wolf slash kill whore gamer type of thing. Even in the assault package, many of the rewards help your team out by suppressing your enemy. An example would be the choppers. Uh, the specialist package doesn't directly contribute to the team. It has the potential to become overpowered Especially since once you hit 8 kills, you unlock all the perks. 8 kills is pretty easy to get for a lot of Call of Duty veteran gamers. Uh, what do you think about this?
Alright, we're finally at the ugly section, and uh, like I said before, here I'll talk about things that should have been taken out of the game but weren't. And uh, number one is everyone's favorite, the noob tube. Yes, the noob tube. This attachment has been in every Call of Duty game taking place in the modern era, and in every game people hated it. Yet it keeps coming back like a clingy ex-girlfriend. What are you going to do? Well, Infinity Ward and Raven Software did take away the perk Danger Close, so that's a move forward. And they added the Blast Your perk, which when used in its pro version is a combination of Tactical Mask and Flak Jacket from Black Ops. Although this perk has the potential to end up being a little overpowered, it does provide some relief from the dreaded noob tube. Alright, we'll stop here and talk about another Call of Duty favorite making a return, and it is the beloved Death Streak system. Who doesn't like killing a guy only to find out that he managed to drop a live grenade just before going down? Or even better, after you put him down, he pulls out a pistol and shoots you in the ass. Then his teammate comes and revives him. That's just awesome. And it is back. So get your F-bombs ready to drop while playing Modern Warfare 3. Okay, I might be able to see a small minuscule reason for the death streaks is because the kill streak rewards are inherently powerful and if you're a noob going up against a team full of pros who just mow you down and keep getting stronger and stronger by getting more kill streaks you'll probably want to leave the game so the death streaks may be used to try to balance this disparity but there's a much better way of doing it design a better matchmaking system match up skill players against other skill players so they can't go stomping noobs and ruining their day it's pretty simple. Regardless of all its flaws, Call of Duty fans will still continue to buy the games and I'm one of them. Let's face it, Call of Duty games aren't perfect, but they are fun and entertaining. That's what keeps us coming back. Well, that's it guys. That was my take on the good, the bad, and the ugly aspects of Modern Warfare 3. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep in mind that these are just opinions and speculations. If you disagree with anything, I'm sure a lot of you do. Please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy these kinds of videos because I'll be bringing you a lot more. So thanks again for watching. I am the real Mossy. Tell your friends about me.